Back in 1969, the Cold War was raging, and the space race was a two-contestant run. The United States on the one hand, and the USSR on the other. Actually, the Russians were winning that race until the Americans managed to put a man on the moon. Today, the moon is still of geopolitical importance, and most powers in the world have their own space program. You can cite India, for example, has a very cheap and effective one. You can also cite South Korea, Brazil, or Israel, whose moon lander actually crashed in April of 2019 on the moon. One of the big players, though, of course, is China. And it does look like this is the contender the United States are now interested in. China that has managed to land a rover on the dark side of the moon just a few months ago. I have heard people say, well, you know, you know, China just landed on the far side of the moon. Um, how did we fall so far behind? I also want to be clear on this point as well. We also have landed on the far side of Mars. And we've done it eight times in human history. That's a pretty difficult thing to, to do. The United States of America is the only country that's been able to do it. But why is it all these countries want to get to the moon now? Well, for decades, it's been widely considered that the moon was just a dusty rock flying through space. Well, that was until 2009, when an Indian probe found millions of tons of ice at the south pole of our natural satellite. That means potential drinking water on the moon and the possibility to produce hydrogen and oxygen on the lunar surface. That means rocket fuel, and that means endless possibilities to go further. Now, of course, all the countries want a piece of the action, but they're not alone. The private sector as well is investing massively to get to the moon. To just give you two examples, there's, of course, SpaceX, Elon Musk's company, and Blue Origin, the company of Jeff Bezos. So now, it's not just a race between countries, it's also a race between the public and the private sector.